Good day, everybody. My name is Todd Standing. I am the man who takes people out into the field and has me the live interact with an eyewitness of Sasquatch. As you can see, got a couple colleagues, expeditioners behind me who are out on an incredible expedition with me here near Radium, British Columbia. You can hear the water flowing below me, so I'm going to talk nice and loud because it's high flow season right now. High, high flow. We're doing some recon. I'm going to switch the camera around to show you what we're recon. So, we're doing some recon of the mountains over here because we're going to do an expedition up to the top of these mountains. A very famous spot where I took Survivor Man and he filmed the top of the head of a Sasquatch. What I'm going to tell you about today, what we're going to see right now, you can see one of my expeditioner brothers up there. He's going to be hiking up. He's going to be coming up on top of this rock. So the reason I stopped here and I'm having a look at this rock. And by the way, let's have a look. I don't know if you can see how steep it is. This is where I'm sitting. So super, super steep. Very steep up behind me. Very, very steep. As you can see, they were climbing. They were really on all fours, which is great. These guys are doing amazing. We're having a fantastic time out here. So actually, let's get into some context too. So we haven't had any sign of any kind. We've seen fresh breaks from this year, but nothing definitive from a Sasquatch until we came out over here and about uh, a mile that way, I felt what I thought was the Sasquatch, just the feeling, and then I heard what I think is a tree break, a big tree break. And considering how loud it is, and I heard it over on the opposite side of where the river is, up on a, a, a plateau that I actually call uh, the Sasquatch Ridge, I've had so much success there. Survivor Man, when I did an episode up there, we found, found some incredible tracks and heard some loud rock clacking back to us up there. But uh, anyways, my prediction was, because we're, we're doing the recon, the recon's been successful, we found a way, because it's hell to get out here and get up the mountain, but we found a way to get through this uh, extremely high flow river, up the mountain and up to Radium, to Sasquatch Holy Ground. Um, and uh, yeah, so we found that. But anyways, I think I heard a Sasquatch bust the tree. So when we come up through there in a couple days from now, we're gonna go look for that tree break, which would be amazing. Because uh, I, I am, I'm in the know that Sasquatch are telepathic beings. Oh, there they are. You can see them coming up to the top. <laughs> of, uh, I call this Sasquatch Rock. So uh, actually it was Jake. So I should call it Jake's Rock. There they are. See the little heads poking up? <laughs> That's crazy. That's awesome. So anyways, I predict there'll, there'll be a tree break that we see over there, which will be amazing. And telepathically, I'm communicating to the Sasquatch, telling them that we are coming. I want them to get to know. I have one brand new expeditioner and one returning expeditioner. Uh, they're relatives and just doing so amazing, having a great time, doing spectacular. I mean, even getting up there, that's, you gotta be crazy tough to get up there on top of that rock like that. That's beastly. And obviously they just smoked that. So, but anyways, I put out the, the feelings that I'm coming and I, I feel like there was a response in that busting of a tree that I did clearly hear. Oh, there they are, I see it. I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> Little heads poking up over there. Actually, let's get a better shot of that because this is super cool. Oh yeah, there they are. I wonder, the camera's dirty. But anyways, wave guys. Woo! So, I just, I'm doing the, this is, this is the angle. I'm pointing the camera up at these guys. <laughs> Whoop, don't slip. So uh, yeah, we're having a great time. What I want to talk about today was uh, something I call Crazy Ivan. It's what I do. So if you ever watched uh, The Hunt for Red October, what a Crazy Ivan is is once in a while you stop and have a look behind you or around you. And I teach that to my expeditioners. The, the number one way I have success in sighting a Sasquatch is I'm hiking along and I'm feeling my way along. I'm, I'm watching the trail, I'm watching the ground, I'm, I'm paying attention to the ecology, all the life, but feeling to suddenly look in a spot, suddenly stop and look in a spot. And that's what happened here probably about eight years ago. I was walking along through this area and up in these trees behind me, imagine seeing even in between these trees, this is the way a lot of sightings happen. See these lights between the, the, the way you can see light through these trees? If you see a Sasquatch through there, you're gonna see a tall, dark figure moving. So imagine black where my finger is, behind all these trees. 
And all you see, you don't see a, a body so much as just the movement of a dark figure that's tall and slimmer than a deer or an elk. Taller than a deer or an elk, because that's the only thing that could possibly be that big. And black. So I was literally coming through here and I had a feeling like I was being watched, stopped, looked up, and saw a dark figure. So what I did was I came around this opposite side over here to get a better look, because what I saw is I saw the dark figure move kind of behind this big rock. So I came to the other side of this big rock and started to go up, and lo and behold, I looked up, and on this enormous rock was my friend, Video 5, my one of my favorite Sasquatches of all time, Jake, standing up on top of that rock. So totally amazing experience, something I'll never ever forget. Um, he stood up on top of that rock brilliantly and beautifully. Uh, I went to pull up my cameras and took uh, probably 30, 40 seconds. By that time he was gone and then I went up around and had a look on that rock and saw that he wasn't there. And then I went back up the ridge to kind of pursue and look and follow the tracks and, and that sort of thing and didn't see anything. But anyways, the point of it is really when you're moving around, your number one sense, guys. The only way, like the, the way I've, I've generated success and the number one thing I do is I feel my way along and I listen. If you're in Sasquatch Habitat, listen to or for the empathic, telepathic, whatever you want to call it, feelings that a Sasquatch will send you because they want you to see the tree breaks. They want you to connect with nature and get closer to it. They want you to stay safe. At least that's my experience with this troop of Sasquatch. And I'll tell you, in this particular area, I mean, this is, this is where I took Survivor Man. This is a, a maintained trail. Uh, people come here rarely. Like, you'll see me talking right now. You're not gonna see anybody except my two boys who are killing up there. I'm so proud of these guys. These guys are amazing. You won't see anybody on these trails. It's just a regular weekday, it's three o'clock, nobody around because this trail is extremely rarely used, unfortunately, especially since COVID. And, uh, but anyways, yeah, you, you gotta move like that. You gotta be feeling, you gotta be, you know, I can feel bear energy. I've proven that many times. I can feel mountain lion energy when I'm being hunted, especially. So you really gotta feel your way through. Use your empathic ability. It's what makes this discovery so attractive and so important is it's literally going to create a paradigm shift where human beings can, we are already, the paradigm shift is happening. Empathy, telepathic ability, remote viewing, these are facts that are absolutely known to science. And it's time, if you're not yet, to jump on board, to use that. And the number one way to connect with your spiritual self and your telepathic and empathic ability is to come out into nature. It's, it's about, the living force of all these plants and all these animals, all this life out here, the water, the mountains, the trees, the grasses, the berries, all the food, you connect to all that and you become more back to your roots of, of nature. Nature wants you to live this way. Nature wants you to thrive by connecting to it, by connecting to who you are. We're from nature, guys. And you got to embrace it. So coming out here and practicing that and, and, and even being a part of anyone who's doing this research or has, is passionate about this. And even, even when you go out camping, I don't know, you see tree breaks, you see tracks, you find things, you have feelings. You know, it's, it's a wonderful, incredible, amazing spiritual experience. And it doesn't matter where you live. Well, I guess it does matter. If you live in Los Angeles, it's kind of hard to find wilderness. But... Uh, I want to encourage you to get out, to, to meditate, to find your peace, find your serenity, quieten all those paradigms that hold you down and listen and feel your way around. It's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful, spiritual, amazing. It'll change your life. You become a better human being. You become a better dad, a better friend, a better son, a better husband by doing this stuff. That's why most of my expeditioners come out here family members. I have wives sending their husbands out here who initially disagreed with it and now make their husbands come out here every year because they literally become more evolved. I don't want to say better, but better. A better husband, a better father, a better son, a better daughter, a better mother. Because you grow. Your, your feelings and your connectivity to the life around you is so immensely important. 
And that's why I've been able to generate such tremendous success with my Sasquatch research, because I feel my way through it. I always have, I always will be. And I hope you can find that in your life, no matter where you are, to, to, to work on that empathic ability, to understand that we are all connected, guys. All life. And, and this, is not, this is not even a spiritual thing. It, it is spiritual, but even if you need to recognize it from a scientific perspective, let me teach you something. This green right here is literally the key to life on planet Earth. It's a chloroplast. And this chloroplast is the only thing on Earth that can derive energy from the sun. So literally, this chloroplast that's green absorbs sunlight. Right now, I'm talking to you. I'm moving my fingers. These guys behind me are hiking around using the sun's energy. Whether you ate it through meat that ate green, or you ate it directly through green, or plants that have absorbed it through green, you're literally star dust harvesting star light. We are all connected through the sun, through the sun's energy. We all have water as our source. So, but the sun's energy is what's moving my mouth right now that gave me the power to pluck this leaf from this plant. Gotta be careful, there's little rocks coming down. So, even if you don't wanna do it from a spiritual continuity perspective, understand that we're all connected because <coughs> we all are deriving energy from the same source. Isn't that powerful? Shouldn't that look at people, love them or hate them, they're deriving energy from the same source that you are, so you are connected and we are a cooperation. And it's awesome if we could all remember that, that we are, life on this earth is all derived sustenance from the sun's energy. <clears throat> and if you could just start with that, oh my goodness, I gotta be careful. <laughs> careful guys! <laughs> that rock missed me by about six feet. But if we could all remember that and feel that, it could bring us all together because through cooperation is big, immense, amazing power. And the more we separate each other, the more we distance each other, the more the Republicans hate the Democrats, the more anti-vaxxers hate the vaxxers, the more it separates us, the more it makes us weak. And that's why this discovery is so important. It's about reconnecting to nature, reconnecting to other people, reconnecting to our telepathic abilities, and growing strong from it. Thank you very much for tuning into my video. My boys are back. Let me, how was it? It was easier than last time. More mud, more grip? Oh, so the mud made it easier. How's Legolas doing? <laughs> Remember, you don't take any risks, please. God damn, that's steep. Again, I want to show you guys how steep this is. Watch first. You see me with my arms in the air? That's how steep this is right now. <laughs> the camera will never show it, but man, is that steep. He slips too much? Easy, big fella. Thank you. And uh, one little slip. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, that's uh, a bad day for all of us.